And thank you for the clarification about the East Bay residents heading to Seacon. Yeah. Yeah. Now I will say, I of course would like everybody to support the local economy, so if everyone's spending their money, I would prefer you spend it in Rhode Island. Having said that, I understand the issue and I, hopefully I clarified it. We begin today with Steve Alquist from Uprise RI. Thoughts, prayer, action. A gun safety youth group is asking that you close gun stores and declare them non-essential in response to what they call an alarming increase in gun sales. Yeah. Your thoughts? So it's a great group and I appreciate the question. Uh, I have decided and, and most likely will continue to decide to keep them open, though I'll take a look at what you send. Um, there has been a spike in gun sales, and that is exactly why I've signed an executive order to extend the amount of time that public safety officers can have to complete the background check. So I want, it, it used to be seven days, and we've expanded that. So I want Rhode Islanders to feel secure that these background checks are happening, and we're giving police and the state police the time they need to, to conduct the background checks. Next question is from Michael Bilo of Motif Magazine. Hero pay is proposed for nurses, teachers, and essential workers, but college adjunct faculty are treated as gig workers. State colleges could see skyrocketing demand with unemployment, financial pressure on students, and CCRI Rhode Island promise. Is there a plan for this? Yeah, so it's a great question. By the way, I am a supporter of increasing the pay of uh, frontline healthcare workers and essential, you know, um, uh, public safety uh, as we go through this crisis for a period of time. Um, I, am, I am advocating, I think the right way to do that is from the federal government and I'm working hard to make that happen. Uh, having said that, you put forth an excellent point and that we don't have a solution yet partially because you have to be careful for unintended consequences, you have to make sure you have the funds to be able to do it. So we are, we are working to see what we might be able to do here at the state. Our, our funds would only allow us to do something on a very targeted basis, uh, very targeted, and to make sure that frankly we have enough healthcare workers on the front line, particularly in nursing homes and hospitals as we get through this. It is my hope and uh, I'm working with the federal delegation to see if the federal government could have a more expansive approach in the next round of COVID stimulus. Brian Crandall of NBC10 says, Governor, why not order everyone out in public to wear face coverings, not just workers like Governor Cuomo is now doing in New York? Yeah, you know, I think everyone should do that. Uh, we have said that's what everyone should be doing. As I said yesterday, that's what I do. My husband and I went for a walk yesterday after work. We had our face coverings. That's what people should be doing. Uh, and anecdotally, as I walk around, that's what people are doing. I think some people are still struggling with it. It feels weird. Like Nicole said, they don't know where to get a mask. But I would strongly encourage every single Rhode Islander um, at all times when you are out and about to wear your cloth face covering. John DePietro says that one of his radio listeners, Maria, is a cashier at a popular store in Rhode Island. Her manager told the cashiers they must apply their own face coverings and hand sanitizer since the store would not provide it. The workers feel this is unfair. Yeah, it is unfair and it also violates the executive order that I signed yesterday. So why don't you call me later and tell me what employer that is and we'll take care of it. The next question is from Tanya Signori of the RI Echo. Loans are a good thing, however, some small businesses may need more of a constant cash flow. Can a system be set up in Rhode Island in the grocery and the retail stores where at the end of a customer's transaction, it is asked if a customer wants to donate $1 to the Rhode Island SBA? You know, that's a, that's a really sweet gesture and I will look into it. The reality is the need is unbelievable now. I put out a new loan program on, I think it was Tuesday, it was $10 million. By the way, they're forgivable loans, so chances are you won't have to pay them back if you make certain criteria. And within three hours, it was depleted. So uh, thank you for your, that's a kind thought and we'll, we will look at it. In the meantime, I'm also hard at work trying to find other large sources of funding to give a lifeline to our small businesses. 
Ryan Belmore of What's Up Newport asks a similar question. Can you provide an update on any type of hazards pay or any kind of additional support that's coming for Rhode Island's essential frontline or customer facing workers? Is that something you can do or does it need to come from the yeah. federal government? So I, th I think I answered that. But you know, the state is under extreme budgetary uh, limitations at the moment. Uh, extreme. Obviously, our COVID-related expenses are skyrocketing, our revenue is plummeting, and to do this right, and by right, I mean kind of broadly across the economy for all healthcare workers, I think it's best done from the federal government. The federal government, with the pandemic unemployment assistance, um, has expanded UI benefits, and they've also given an extra $600 for folks who are on UI. I think they should do a similar thing to uh, all of our healthcare workers who are out there. So we're working that. In the meantime, I am also working with my team to see if there's some like smaller targeted initiative where we can provide some more immediate relief to the folks who need it most. Bill Bartholomew says that he was at a shop yesterday that is deemed essential but refused to accept cash. Can you clarify Rhode Island's laws with respect to requirement to accept cash? Bill, you have stumped me and I will have to get back to you on that. We have not relaxed that requirement, so it should still be in full force and effect, um, but I will look, I'll look into it further. Our next question is from Ben DeCastro, social media influencer. The ratio of negative versus positive results since closing state parks 12 days ago is similar for the 10 days prior to the closure. Would you consider reopening the parks this weekend with the social distancing and cloth covering as a way to reduce foot traffic and the rise in pedestrian versus bike and car access? Yeah. So. Um I think people should be going for a walk. And if you, as I have said, if, if you're lucky enough to live near a beach or a state park, go for a walk. It's a great way to get out and about. Uh, the mayor of Providence has taken a different approach here in Providence. Um, but I think, you know, we have closed our um, parking lots because we found that when we had the parking lots open at beaches and state parks, people were just congregating. So it wasn't one or two or three people walking. It wasn't just a family walking together. They were big groups of people. And by the way, with the weather getting nicer, I, I think if I were to take your advice, it would be create a bigger problem this weekend. So my approach is let's get through these next two weeks. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be safe. And then I hope I'll be able to start to think about some of the things you're talking about, which is relaxing a little bit so we can slowly and in a safe way get back to some semblance of normalcy. The next question is from Tara Granahan. Representative Anastasia Williams tells us she's urged you to issue an executive order, which she drafted, stating any COVID-19 infection suffered by a frontline worker or essential personnel shall be considered work-related, providing the worker with labor protections. She hasn't heard from you. I haven't seen it, but I will certainly look at it. As a reminder, uh, everyone now has a minimum of 10 days of paid sick leave. We also have uh, one of the first emergency orders I did, executive orders, was to expand TDI to create a COVID TDI benefit. Uh, and then now there is the pandemic uh, assistance fund, which provides UI benefits plus $600 to people in exactly that circumstance. So I will always, of course, listen to a good idea from anyone and I will look at it. But right now there are three new buckets of benefits for exactly that sort of worker. So I just want to make sure everyone knows about that. Matt Allen has a question in regard to the dashboard that was just released. Looking at the new data on the portal just released, it looks like the beginning of a downward curve in positive tests. Is that what the DOH data is telling you? When will the public get to see the projections you're working yeah, with? Yeah, th thank you, Matt. So um, tomorrow I plan to uh, share some of the data that we have around our modeling. I have been reluctant to do that. Frankly, I'm still a little reluctant to do that because we still have so little data. But uh, so the, an the short answer is tomorrow. We are not in a downward slope. That I can assure you. Uh, I do think, because of the great work of Rhode Islanders, 
we have uh, been successful in reducing the, um, the, the, how high the slope is and how much we're climbing up the ramp. Um, so it's, as we've been saying, we are beginning to flatten the curve, but we're definitely not on the downswing. Our next question comes from Tim White at WPRI. Viewers are writing in wondering if face shields are an acceptable alternative to face masks if people can't get their hands on a mask. It's an interesting uh, question. When healthcare workers are uh, using it in certain situations, they have both a mask as well as a face shield for the goggles uh, component. In, for the public, members of the public, the key is to be able to cover the nose and the mouth. So if it's a face shield that happens to be able to allow for that so that the infectious particles that are emitted when we speak or laugh or cough uh, do not project out onto anything, then that's a creative uh, way to achieve uh, the same goal. Uh, but for most people, the easiest option to actually create something from a cloth that you already have is to use the cloth face coverings that we have been referencing. Thank you. The next question from Amanda Pitts. Uh, this is very similar to what the governor has already spoken about, crossing the border into the Massachusetts grocery stores. Can we skip to the next one? Are nursing home staff who test positive for COVID-19 but are asymptomatic or who have mild symptoms allowed to continue to work or do they have to self-quarantine? This is from Lynn Arditi. It's an excellent question. It's all of what we are grappling with to um, be able to make sure that patients and residents are best cared for while maintaining the workforce staff. Our primary message and focus is if someone has symptoms and they are a healthcare worker, they absolutely need to stay home. That's the um, definitive message that is in place. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have released guidelines that help us understand creative ways to address the situation, particularly if staffing is short if you have someone who does not have symptoms, who is wearing an appropriate mask while at work, even if they have tested uh, positive for COVID, as long as they've gone at least seven days without developing any symptoms, um, we are assessing the potential for allowing them to be able to work safely in caring for other patients who are already COVID positive. That's an example of one of the many measures that we are taking to provide the support that's needed in our nursing home and other congregate settings, but doing it in the safest um, way possible with the evidence that supports it. Amanda Milkovitz of the Boston Globe is asking, when will all hospitals, nursing homes, and home health care have the PPE and medical equipment needed for the surge? Did Rhode Island lose most of the federal stockpile to New York? As the governor has shared, a ton of work has been going on scouring the globe to make sure that we have the personal protective equipment that is needed, particularly for our health care workforce. These are the heroes who are on the front line, who we know need to be protected in the way that uh, they uh, should be while caring for patients and residents in um, all of our health care facilities. So every effort is being done to make sure that we have the PPE needed to bring us through the surge. And that's oftentimes where you hear the governor saying we might be okay for today, but it's also having enough to get us through uh, the next several weeks. And I really want to credit uh, the leaders on our PPE uh, team uh, that has worked extremely hard to get us to the point to be able to um, face um, what's before us in needing to have the adequate PPE needed. Um, we don't have the understanding that uh, the PPE we had went elsewhere. We know that states across the country um, are also looking for 
uh, PPE, New York, Massachusetts, and other, other states as well. So, but you can be assured that we have a very strong team here who's um, making sure that Rhode Island is where they need to be, where we need to be to protect our healthcare workers and others that need PPE. Nancy Thomas of RI News Today asks, will employees ask customers who are not wearing masks to leave the business? Thank you for the question. Uh, they shouldn't. In fact, as, a, as DBR is putting forth the regulations, we will make note that um, customers shouldn't be turned away. Having said that, we, I'm asking customers shouldn't be doing that. Customers should be using a cloth face mask. It could be a sock. It could be a scarf. It could be anything. Cloth face mask. And we are asking um, employers and retail operations or any business that's open, grocery stores and the like, to do their very best to advertise the fact, put up signage, et cetera, make sure the customer knows uh, that they should be wearing a face mask. But they, they shouldn't be turning customers away. Governor, our last question for today, and it's a big one. We all wonder what summer in Rhode Island will look like. Do you have a vision of what a rollout of beaches and parks reopening might look like? This is from Elise Major of Providence Monthly. Yeah. I have a dream. I know what I would like to have happen, because I'm a big user of the beaches in the summer. Uh, I don't yet, but I would like to say that we will, we will be able to be using our bar parks and beaches um, somehow this summer. I'll leave it at that. We are still going to be under some restrictions this summer. There's no way around that. Um, even if we're going back to work or kids have summer camp, there will still be restrictions all summer long, all fall. Frankly, until we have an effective treatment and until we have a vaccine, a treatment will come sooner, I think, than a vaccine, but a vaccine is well more than a year away. There's going to still be restrictions, and those restrictions particularly will be around crowds. There's going to be strict restrictions continually around the size of crowds um, and our ability to congregate. But I'm going to do my very best to make sure we can all go for a swim and go for a walk on the beach and go for a walk in the park somehow this summer um, in a new way, in a way that keeps us safe.